If you want to break into tech, this is the video for you. Here are the top seven tech jobs in 2025. We're going to be breaking each one down, talking about what they do, the average salary, what technologies you need to know, and free resources for you to get started as a beginner. Plus, I'm going to be adding a difficulty score for each one so you can see how hard it is to break in. Coming in at number seven, we have a UX designer. These are people who make sure digital products are easy to use and visually appealing, similar to an interior designer who makes sure a house looks and feels good. UX designers create layouts and test user experiences, ensuring websites and apps are intuitive. For example, if you're a UX designer working at Amazon, your task is to increase the number of customers clicking the buy now button on product pages. You might study user behavior, noticing that some people are scrolling too much before making a decision. You'd then rearrange the layout to bring key information like pricing, shipping details, product reviews closer to the top. You'd also test out different color schemes for like the buy now button, ensuring it captures attention without overwhelming the rest of the design. It's subtle changes like these that can increase millions of dollars in sales for a company like Amazon. The average salary for a UX designer ranges from $70,000 to $100,000 in America. To succeed in this role, you need tools like Figma, Sketch, and Adobe XD to create wireframes and user flows. A background in design or human computer interaction at university is beneficial, and you can start the learning with the Google UX Design Professional Certificate on Coursera. I would rate the UX Design role a 5 out of 10 in difficulty because it requires creativity and research skills, but the technical demands are just so much less compared to the other roles. Such as number six, we have the software developer, what I call the builder in the digital world. Just like in the real world, a builder constructs house brick by brick, Software developers write code line by line to create applications and systems. Imagine you're a software developer working at Shopify where you handle both the front end and back end development. On the front end, you'd focus on parts of the website that users interact with directly, like designing and optimizing product catalog and interface. You'd write code using languages like JavaScript or frameworks like React to make the site visually appealing and ensure smooth interactions when customers browse products or add them to the cart. On the back end, your work would involve setting up server-side infrastructure that powers the platform's functionality. For example, you'd work with Node.js or Ruby on Rails to manage the data flow between the server and the database, ensuring that when customers make a purchase, their order gets processed and stored. You'd also focus on optimizing the performance of the system to handle high traffic during major sales events like Black Friday to ensure the website doesn't crash. Software developers can earn between $75,000 and $120,000 annually. A bachelor's degree in computer science is sometimes required, but sometimes simple trainings and certifications will do. You can start learning to code for free with Harvard's CS50 course on EDX. You might want to learn languages like Python, Java, and JavaScript as a beginner. I would rate the software developer role a 6 out of 10 in difficulty because you should be proficient in a few languages like I listed, which could be a challenge, but the complexity of your actual work is more dependent on the project that you're working on rather than the role itself. Coming in at number 5, we have a DevOps engineer who's like the foreman of a construction site. In the digital world, they make sure everything runs smoothly between developers and operations, automating processes, just like the foreman overseeing the entire construction team, ensuring everything works efficiently. Let's just say you're a DevOps engineer at Netflix, and the development team is working on a new feature that would allow multiple users to sync their Netflix accounts and watch content together in real time, like a Netflix party. And you as a DevOps engineer would be responsible for making sure this feature gets tested, deployed, and scaled seamlessly using continuous integration and continuous delivery. To break it down, continuous integration is the process where developers frequently merge their code changes into a shared repository. As a DevOps engineer, you would automate the testing of these code changes every time using tools like Jenkins. So when developers push new code, Automated tests run to catch any bugs or integration issues early. This process ensures that new code doesn't break existing features or cause performance issues. Then comes continuous delivery, where you automate the deployment of these tested code changes into different environments like staging and production. For example, you'd use platforms like Docker and Kubernetes to containerize the applications, ensuring they run consistently across different environments. It should work on a Mac or a PC just fine. If Netflix developers introduce a new feature that requires a redesign of the user interface, your continuous development pipeline should ensure that this change automatically is deployed to a 
small percentage of users first, a canary development, before rolling it out to the entire platform. This minimizes the risk of widespread issues if bugs are discovered. The salary for a DevOps engineer ranges from $85,000 to $115,000. To be successful, you need to know tools like Jenkins, Docker, Kubernetes. A degree in computer science or software engineering definitely does help, and you can start with learning a lot about this using the AWS DevOps course on Udemy. I would rate the DevOps role a 6.5 out of 10 in difficulty because it requires experience with these automation tools and quite a bit of collaboration between cross-functional teams. Coming in at number four, we have the cloud engineer, which is like the facility manager of a house construction. Just like facility managers ensure plumbing and electricity in a house works perfectly, a cloud engineer makes sure all digital utilities like data storage and cloud services run smoothly. Imagine you're a cloud engineer at Airbnb, responsible for managing the platform's performance and scalability. When users search for accommodations in Paris, for example, Airbnb systems need to fetch results from a massive database in real time. As a cloud engineer, you'd work with cloud platforms like AWS, for example. You'd probably also use AWS auto scaling to ensure that server capacity dynamically adjusts to traffic spikes during high demand periods to prevent any slowdowns or outages. If you're overlooking the Airbnb's booking processes, which involve payment, host notification, and updating availability, using AWS Elastic Load Balancing, you distribute incoming traffic across multiple servers so that no single system becomes overwhelmed, maintaining a smooth booking experience even during peak usage. Cloud engineers earn between $90,000 and $120,000 a year. The key skills include AWS, Google, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure. A bachelor's degree in computer science or information systems is often required, and you can get started with the Google Cloud Fundamentals on Coursera or AWS Educate. I would rate the cloud engineer role a seven out of 10 in difficulty because you need a strong knowledge base of cloud platforms, network security, and infrastructure management. Now we're moving on to the top three. And I'd also like to know down below right now, if you had to choose a role for the rest of your career based off of this video, which role would you pick? And of course, there's only one right answer. As for number three, we have a cybersecurity specialist, which is like a security guard for a house. Digitally, they protect systems and networks from potential threats, like a security guard ensures that intruders don't get into a building. Let's just say you're a cybersecurity specialist at Meta. Your primary role would be safeguarding the massive amounts of personal data flowing through Meta's platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, where billions of users share sensitive information. You'd monitor network traffic using tools like intrusion detection systems and firewalls to spot suspicious activities, such as attempts to access user accounts or steal data. For example, if a hacker tried to break into user profiles or inject malicious code into a system, you'd immediately block their access using firewall rules and access control lists. Afterwards, you'd patch vulnerabilities through software updates to prevent future exploitation. These specialists earn between $85,000 and $130,000 a year. You'd need skills in firewalls, VPNs, and encryption technologies like SSL, TLS. Many cybersecurity professionals hold certifications like CompTIA Security Plus or CISSP. To start learning, check out Cyberary's free cybersecurity courses. Link will be in the description below. I would rate the cybersecurity specialist role a 7.5 out of 10 in difficulty because it's a challenging role with evolving threats and requires expertise in security protocols because as hackers get smarter, protections against them need to get stronger. Coming in at number two, we have the data scientist, who's like the surveyor of the construction site. They analyze data to help businesses make informed decisions, similar to how a surveyor ensures that the land is suitable for a building. As a data scientist at Uber, let's just say, your task might involve optimizing dynamic pricing during high demand times, such as rush hour. By analyzing millions of data points from rider behavior, driver availability, and environmental conditions, you would build predictive models to determine how prices should fluctuate. For instance, you might use Python and R to clean and process the data, while leveraging machine learning frameworks like Scikit-Learn to train models and predict demand based on factors, real-time traffic, weather conditions, and rider demand. These models would enable users to set surge pricing that incentivizes more drivers to be available, while also ensuring that riders can also find transportation during peak times. Data scientists make between $90,000 and $130,000 a year. 
You'll need to be familiar with tools like Python, R, and SQL, and a bachelor's or master's degree in mathematics, statistics, or computer science is often required. To get started, try Harvard's data science course on EDX. I would rate the data scientist role an 8 out of 10 in difficulty because it requires a high level of expertise in data analysis, statistics, and programming, Plus, you would be handling large data sets and be creating predictive models. Last but not least, coming in at number one, and it would have been a crime if I made this video without mentioning this role, and that would be the AI and machine learning specialist who is like the chief architect of a house. They design systems that enable machines to learn and adapt over time, just like an architect plans out the structure of a building. Imagine you're an AI specialist at Tesla, focused on improving the autopilot system by training it to recognize and react to objects such as pedestrians, vehicles, and traffic signals. Using deep learning techniques, you would develop complex neural networks with frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch to help the AI make real-time decisions in dynamic driving environments. You'd feed the system with vast data sets collected from Tesla's onboard sensors, training it to detect and respond to various scenarios accurately. Additionally, you'd employ reinforcement learning to enable the AI to continuously improve in its decision making by learning from its simulated driving experiences. This combination of deep learning and reinforcement learning would allow Tesla's autopilot system to adapt to unpredictable road conditions, enhancing overall safety for drivers and pedestrians as a whole. AI specialists earn between $100,000 and $140,000 a year. You need strong skills in Python, TensorFlow, and PyTorch, along with solid foundations in mathematics and machine learning algorithms. You can start learning AI with Coursera's AI for Everyone course. I would rate the AI and machine learning specialist role a 9 out of 10 in difficulty because it requires deep knowledge of algorithms, machine learning frameworks, and advanced mathematics. Well, that's about all I have for this video. I really hope that you guys liked it. And if you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are curious about what software engineers actually do a complete deep dive into their day-to-day -day life, you might like this video right here.